when you get flagrant fouled by Angel Reese, what's going through your mind and how do you just stay within yourself to finish the game? What's going through my mind is I need to make these two free throws. That's all I'm thinking about. Um, it's just a part of basketball. It is what it is. Um, you know, she's trying to play, make a play on the ball and, and, and get the block. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it happens. And uh, those those free throws when you have to shoot them with nobody at the line are kind of hard. So it's a little different than having people at the line. So I was just trying to trying to focus on making those. On the flagrant, did you feel like that? The basketball play. Yeah. Did you feel like that was the appropriate call? or it's the basketball play. I can't control the refs. They affected the game, obviously, a lot tonight. So can't. But it did look in it, but like you were going for the ball. I mean, I'm always going for the ball, but y'all gonna play that clip for what, 20 times before Monday? So. It's cool. We don't work in TV, so I'm, I'm not gonna play <laughs> yeah. it anymore. But yeah. um, I mean, somebody, this clip gonna go, get out somewhere. I know. Sure. Yeah. yeah, you. Hey, Joe, I want to get your assessment from the first half to the second half. The first half, you and Camilla were cooking in the first half. What happened in that second half? I mean, for inside, I mean, I think we were playing really hard. Um, I think we went up really strong a lot of times and we didn't get a lot of calls and going back and looking at the film, I've seen a lot of calls that weren't made. I guess some people got a special whistle, but just being able to play hard as best as we can. Um, I'm still proud of Camilla going on, still getting a double double. Um, and that's something y'all not going to be able to stop the, regardless of the referees. Like we're here for a while. Um, we're not going to be denied if, if, no matter what you guys can try to do, but our goal is to win. And we're going to do whatever it takes to win and continue to do that. Teresa Foster Bradsby and Owen Pence, thank you for joining me today. Let me give you proper introductions, though, because I don't think our On Her Turf audience has been introduced to you before. Tarika Foster Brasby really needs no introduction. You see her everywhere talking WNBA and sports in general, but she is an expert in women's backs of basketball. And uh, you speak about it on CBS Sports and other places. And I appreciate you for joining me. And Owen Pence, one of my new faves already. Owen is a, a writer with Windsider. But um, he, listen, Owen, Slam, Boston Globe, Chicago Tribune. Okay, you're getting the, you're getting the hint of the caliber of person Owen is. But he is all things WNBA. He covers the Liberty. And so we have some things to talk about. Um, because I don't know about you two. I have for weeks now been excited about the WNBA season and also frustrated that I have not just been able to talk about the basketball on the court because every week, every week, there's some sort of controversy, often involving Caitlin Clark, and um, it just rises to the level of these nonsensical conversations, but they become a big deal. They're being discussed in major, major uh, on news outlets that are don't even cover sports, right? Like, I mean, they've just become like news, not just sports news, news. And so we have to talk about it. And that's been frustrating because while I love the WNBA and women's basketball getting uh, national attention, I don't feel like we're giving it the right national attention. And that's frustrating. And so I actually tweeted before yesterday's Indiana Sky versus Fever game that I was praying for normalcy in the discussions <laughs> around that game. That's what I said. I was praying for normalcy or in the dis discussions around that game. But we couldn't get that because what we got was a bunch of ridiculous stuff around Angel Reese after she fouled Caitlin Clark. And so I do want to get your, your, your guys' thoughts on that. It was a flagrant one foul. I don't think anyone here is going to dispute that, but I'll let you guys speak for yourself. But I think the important thing that people need to understand is that a flagrant one foul can be accidental. It it's not does not mean there's presumed intent and being malicious when you assess that. It's just sort of the rules. If you go to do a basketball play and you accidentally hit someone in the head, you will be assessed a flagrant one foul. That does not mean that it was not a basketball play, and it does not mean that there was malicious or nefarious intent, but you are going to be assessed a flagrant one foul. And as we can see here, this is a picture of when the foul was taking place. From my vantage point, guys, 
it looks like Angel Reese is going for the ball. That's what it looks like she's going for. And so the trajectory of where her hand ultimately hit Angel ultimately hit Caitlin Clark in the head is very unfortunate. And so the refs properly in that game assess a flagrant one foul. I think that should be the end of the conversation. It is an end of conversation. So I'm going to leave it up to you. Who would like to go first? But I need to hear from both of you on your initial thoughts and reaction to this. Please, I, I got to hand the floor to Tarika. This, this is Damn it, Owen. <laughs> I was hoping you would go first. Oh, I am so exhausted by this conversation. And it's because it's not about the foul because the conversation has gone so far past the foul where it's just simply anytime there is um, excessive or aggressive or physicality and Caitlin Clark is involved, it ends up being so much more than what it really is. And I think that is where all of us begin to feel exhausted by the conversation. Um, Angel Reese was very clear post the game that it was a basketball play. Anybody that's going to look at this can see that it was a basketball play. Was it inadvertent, excessive contact or unnecessary contact? Yes, that's why the flagrant one was called. That's why flagrant fouls exist in basketball because there are moments where people will do something that may be a bit excessive or may be unnecessary, but it doesn't necessarily mean they intended to do it. If it does feel that something is intentional, then that is where we begin to walk into the flagrant two conversation. So there are rules and policies in place in our sport already because these things existed and have existed for a long time. The problem is just that there's a conversation that people don't want to have, but we have to have it in order to truly get to the bottom of it. And that is the race conversation. The reason that this continues to go on and on and on is because there is a racial divide and racial undertones in almost everything involving Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark as it as a unit together. And folks don't want to talk about it. They want to ignore it. They want to act like it doesn't exist, but it does exist. Just yesterday, someone made um the comment on social media i can't remember who it was but they were like you know when you guys were talking about wanting to grow the sport grow the game this is part of that um when folks were debating lebron james and the things that he do this is the stuff that they talk about all the time for years this is the stuff that he's after going through but what you people don't understand is that these conversations don't exist when it is a black athlete versus another black athlete. So yeah, there may be conversations about LeBron and what people will say in regards to him being the GOAT and MJ and all this other stuff. But when it comes to things like the physicality of the MNBA, nobody's talking about it to the extent that they're doing it here. And even when there are other women that are physical with other women, it is not being talked about to the extent that it is when it involves Caitlin Clark. And there's no other reason for us to think that there is anything other involved other than the fact that it there are racial undertones. Why we can't move forward from it is because everyone is afraid to address it. We have to address it. And it's not just like, cause I mean, you had Dijanae Carrington and um, Mabry getting in it the other day and it wasn't a big deal. And that was a oh. black player and a white player and oh. zip, no one said anything. So there definitely is a racial element and I agree with it, but agree with you, but it's, we're, we're not even being consistent. Um, it's largely around anything that just happens or impacts Caitlin Clark in any way her singularly, not any other player in the league. And to me, it is just, we cannot keep going on like this. We cannot mm -hmm. microanalyze every single thing. It is not a fun conversation. It is a disingenuous conversation. And, you know, I feel like there people seem to be suggesting that it's certain outlets like we we understand that certain outlets have certain political agendas we understand that we're not going to call them out by name but it's not just those outlets right it's the constant references to someone being classy versus someone being dirty it's the constant references to caitlin having to get through a physical game here's swin cash I want Tarika just really quickly, because then Owen, I, I want you to weigh in on this, but can you explain to people the significance of someone like a Swin Cash 
who she is tweeting something like this, that she felt compelled to tweet this after a game, to have the only highlight of Angel, she's referring to Angel Reese, be that foul, yeah. is nasty work by these outlets. You know what we're, you know what you're doing while also questioning her intent is nonsense. They got it right. It was a flagrant one. It was called by the refs and the players played on. Shaking my head, keep pushing and competing Angel with the crown emoji. Can yes. you just t explain to people who Swin Cash is and why it's so significant yes. that she <laughs> felt the need to tweet that after the game? Absolutely, because Swin Cash is one of the greats in our game. Swin Cash is a multiple WNBA champion. She had career stints in Detroit where she won championships in Seattle. She is currently in the league office um, for the New Orleans Pelicans. She is one of the greatest 25 players to play in the WNBA, was honored as such in 2022. So for her... As someone who has played this game, as someone who was a member of the Detroit Shock, and let me tell you, if you know your history of the WNBA, Detroit Shock, which was coached by Bill Lambeer, who was a member of the Bad Boy Pistons, they had a reputation of being a very physical basketball team. When you come to play Detroit, and that Detroit team had some goats, had the Katie Smiths and the, D the Tweety Nolans and the Swing Cash and the Teresa, um, um, excuse me, Planet Pearsons. And these were physical players, right? But they played the game the way the game was supposed to be played. And as Black women, they understood what it meant to have this kind of conversation surrounding you. And it still didn't get to the level that it is now. And what Swin is basically saying is enough is enough. And the sad part about this, um, and I, you know, Owen, you can tell me whether or not you agree, but the sad part about this is, for some reason, even as media members, there is like this outrage as if we're somehow siding with one and not like uh, siding against the other. And and in my mind, I'm I just keep thinking, even from media, there's no hate for Caitlyn. Like we can't even get to talk about how amazing Caitlin is starting to transition into this league and is really starting to play the way that I think a lot of us expected her to play because we're too busy talking about the outside noise that people who are not a part of the sport are bringing. So it's it's just, it's it's really difficult to, to be a WNBA analyst right now because none of what we're talking about is about what's happening on the court because we're too busy focusing on trying to bring the context and the balance to what is happening on the court, but has happened for the last 28 years. And I think that's probably what's most disappointing for me. I'm someone who has been critical of Caitlin coming into the WNBA, not that I was criticizing her as a person or her as a as her game. I criticize what any WNBA analyst would criticize as it relates to certain specific things, as I have done with many other players in the WNBA. But even in that, in simply doing your job, you are tagged and considered, you know, a hater and doing this and doing that to say, hey, many Angel, more things that you're not saying. Many more, we're, many we're more called, things. We're many called things. so <laughs> many, many, many different things. And it's just like, dude, like nobody. Nobody hates this girl. I've spoken to her. I've interviewed her. I think she is an incredible and a phenomenal player in person. She's never, ever done or said anything to me or around me that would cause me to believe that she's worthy of all of this constant discourse that is surrounding her. Um, and it's not coming from her. And the same with Angel Reese. These girls are just trying to play basketball and they understand and respect what comes along with that. I wish other people who supported them understood that too. Yeah, what do you think, Owen? Because I mean, I saw former NFL quarterbacks weighing in on this conversation, <laughs> the most physical sport there may be, weighing in on this conversation and, and demanding suspensions and, and claims of jealousy because of this incident and what Angel Reese said post-game. And, and let's be real, former NFL quarterback might be generous to Matt Leinart because what he did in the NFL, I, I don't remember it. Uh, but but anyhow, I, I, I totally agree uh, with everything that's been said. I think that these people who have entered this space 
are are entering the space in bad faith. These are men who are online, who are insecure, who are pathetic, frankly, who have entered the space with the goal of shaming and humiliating black women. And specifically, Angel Reese, I think a lot of this stems from the 2023 national championship and the fact that people were not comfortable with seeing a young black woman express so much joy uh, around winning and beating Caitlin Clark uh, in really, really uh, considerable fashion. Let's be honest, that game was not close. So I think that there's a lot of history here that goes into it. And to your point, T, they are doing a disservice to Caitlin herself because we could be talking about all the dimes she was dishing yesterday. Like she, she's really starting to hit her groove on the court. And Caitlin, we heard Angel, it was a basketball play. We all saw it. Look at the photo. She is looking at the ball. Like this is just, the hypocrisy is off the charts right now. I think uh, th these are people who constantly cry about, uh, you know, cancel culture. They cry about participation trophies. And then here they are wanting Caitlin Clark to get all the participation trophies. No, you got to earn they your way They also cry about league. DEI and they wanted her on the Olympic team, but, you know, claiming there's not enough white players. But, okay, I'm sorry, Owen, go ahead. <laughs> Which is wild because Diana and Taurasi was a legend. It, exactly. We have more than enough. <laughs> it, it is already dis disproportionate. Let's be very real about that. Uh, so I think it, it's gotten completely out of control. It's, it's doing no one any good and it's uh, just a complete distraction. And it's really frustrating because these are people that I think are, are uh, keyboard warriors, whatever the term is, but this has real life impact. And this stuff is dangerous. It is hateful. It is unacceptable. Uh, and, and it needs to stop. Yeah, you know, I think something that's been really important to point out about Angel Reese, because I see a lot of commentary in response to me about Angel Reese being... Well, she said she wanted the villain role. And I want to be very clear. She never said she wanted it. She never said she loved it. That's not true. These are just not correct statements. What she said is, all right, y'all want me to be the villain. Y'all are essentially assigning me the villain. So I'm going to be the villain. And I'll take that. I'll take that if it means more growth for women's basketball. If it means more eyes on our ball game on, you know, but yeah. she accepted that because it, it, it wasn't a choice. It wasn't a discussion like, hey, Angel, do you, you were going to vilify her regardless, right? That was going to happen regardless. So yeah. when people say she loved it or wanted it, or embraced it, she embraced it because she didn't have a choice. And I, I want that to be clear. But the second thing is that even if she did want to be a villain, that doesn't mean she's not a human, right? And so being a villain does not warrant being called monkey, being called the N-word, being called just so many derogatory, derogatory things that are called and to the people that cover the sport. Uh, it does not mean those things. And when she does show us some vulnerability, like she did after her game at LSU when they lost in the tourney and she cried, she was still scrutinized for that. People said, oh, you can't cry. You know, you can't show vulnerability because this is it. And it really bothers me. This is why I don't like the idea of she's from Baltimore, she's tough, the strong black woman trope, the, the, I, I saw someone speaking about the fact that, oh, I love, I love that she's willing to embrace the villain. I don't love it because she's a black woman, right? Let it be someone of another race because y'all are gonna make her a villain regardless. And she was out with her teammate last night. And so I see people saying, oh, she's unbothered. You don't know she's unbothered. I need people to understand that what people show you publicly does not mean it doesn't have any meaningful impact. So the same way that you say, Caitlin Clark is 22, she is young, she doesn't deserve some of this. I do not understand why we cannot humanize Angel Reese and give her the same grace to understand that she is also a young person and does not deserve this kind of vitriol that comes at her for typical, normal things that come on the basketball court. What we praise men for. She's like a Kevin Garnett. 
She's like a Dennis Rodman, not fully by their games, but I'm just saying intensity, energy on the court. And I'm bringing that up, not because there aren't past W players to compare her to, but for people who may be new, who may more, know more about the NBA, we like that stuff. We're like, yeah, King G, and this person's an agitator, <laughs> and Russ is in someone's face, and Patrick Beverly. Like, we love these things and celebrate it when the men do it. But she does it, and she's a classless. She's a mean person. She's, you know, just all kinds of things. And it's just, guys, it is so just... People are going to be racist. They're going to have microaggressions. They're going to have their unconscious bias. Whether you think it's they know it or they don't. But I'm just saying we have to get to a place where we can have normal basketball discourse. Because I know if I am feeling it as a member of the media who covers this league, I know the players are feeling it. And I'm not just saying that because I'm speculating. I know for a fact the players are feeling it. Yep. They're tired. They're tired. They're over it. And I think one of the things that makes this such a difficult thing to go through and process right now is it's it's not just it's not just angel and it's not just caitlin right like it is the entire like the entire wnba is tired of having to say the same thing over and over again, having to answer the same questions over and over again. I sit in press conferences with coaches who are asked about Caitlin Clark and they're not even playing against Caitlin Clark. Like there is not, like the Fever are not playing this team today. So like, where are these questions stemming from or coming from? I see questions about um, the discourse and things in the league to people who are not even a part, like who have nothing to do with what's happening and what's going on. The way that I've seen some of the headlines being framed, the way that, I, and, and the excuse is, well, this is what it means to grow the sport. These are the growing pains that comes to sport. No. Fans having differences and opinions, sure, that comes along with the sport. But people that are tasked with covering this game accurately and fairly, taking an intentional um, route of how they frame a conversation, of how they frame a headline, of how they post a topic bar at the bottom, those are intentional choices, not from fans not from people who just happen to have a difference of opinions. Those are things that are purposefully done. And I think that is what, one, continues this mistrust that players will have with media, no matter who you are, because they're going to group us all the same. But number two, it's like, if you're going to say, well, Angel did this and, and whatever, why don't we see the same clips from Caitlyn? Caitlyn gets an attitude as well. Caitlyn has technical fouls too. Caitlyn talks junk on the court too. I've seen it with my own eyes and I, I'm not upset about it. It's part of the game. It's part of what players do. It's what competitors do. No one's mad. Talk your junk, girl. Back it up if you can, but do what you, this is what everyone does. And so I think that's the other thing that like bugs me. It's like, if you're going to call out this stuff, call it out fairly, call it out from everybody, not just from one person and makes another person feel like they're just innocent in it all. It's part of the game. And, and, and that just is, and it just is what it is. And it is up to media members, no matter what or who you're covering to cover it fair and accurately, not just one sided. I mean, even if you are, uh, I'm a team reporter. I cover the Connecticut sun. It is my job to highlight what Connecticut does. It is my job to highlight and, and bring attention to players from Connecticut first, because that is the team I cover, but I am also a journalist. And that means it is part of my job holistically to ensure no matter who I'm bringing attention to, it is accurate. It is fair period. Like it, it's not that hard. Yeah. I, look, did it, like I have nothing to say to that because um, you you nailed it. Oh, and there was a clip recently of a video when Brianna Stewart was being asked a question about physicality, and while they didn't name Caitlin Clark, <laughs> like you could just tell it was about Caitlin Clark, <laughs> and like Brianna just looked so frustrated. She's and she kind of right. like did this <laughs> lean forward thing and this sigh, and it's just like, and that's why I'm saying like they're just like. It's it's just enough is enough. 